Hey guys, it's Michelle, and I am going to do this little video. Well, I guess it's not going to be a little video, <clears throat> but anyways, um, I had a, a request to color a gorgeous, uh, do a tutorial on coloring a gorgeous girl stamp, and then I had questions from a few other people on Copic coloring. So I decided to put together this video. Uh, this first part of this video, it'll be two parts. Um, the first part is just going to be explaining and showing you different techniques. I'll do um, some test coloring and tell you supplies that are best for alcohol inks and then my second video I'll do a whole um, just coloring an image then. Okay so let's get started. Let's try not to make this as long as possible. The first, first of all you can purchase these books because I'm going to tell you I am not a certified Copa colorer. I don't even think that I'm that great. Um, I have only learned, I can hold my own and I can do the job, but um, I am no means a professional. I've never taken a class. I've strictly learned anything that I've done from watching YouTube. So with that being said, and, and I've tried techniques that other, and I can't, you know, there's a slew of videos, so I can't name one individual because I just Google it in or type in a search and I watch umpteen videos sometimes I don't even pay attention to who I'm watching but anyway um, and sometimes when I watch their techniques I learn and do my own techniques and you know sometimes what they do doesn't work for me I'm trying to adjust this lighting so you don't get a glare but oh well I don't know um, so anyways so by all means do and, and the only way to get good is to practice, 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 practice. Um, you know, when I first colored, it was really lousy, and I thought it looked good until I kept getting better. But what I'll do is, and this is the only way to get really good, is I just, like, I had a camper, and I would take and stamp out a bunch of images, you know, and I'd sit all weekend and just color, color, color. So here's some different images, and then I have them, so if I want to make a card or a project... So here's just different images that I've colored. I love these besties. And you get better at learning these techniques with um, the shading and the pleats and everything. And skin colors, there's not one way to do it. There's many. I change them. Different girls have different skin tones, so there's different colors to use. So these are just images that I've colored and I just sat for, you know, all last summer coloring. I'll show you my black and whites. I love um, there we go. I love coloring in black and white and if anybody wants a tutorial on me doing that it's really easy. You only use like four markers. I will be glad to do that. Just let me know. There's another one done in black and white. So yeah you get better you just have to practice practice keep doing it doing it doing it it will not work for you for you have to just practice that's all I can say okay so anyways first of all these are the colors I'm going to use to show you my number one tip you have to use memento ink to stamp your images black ink do not this isn't a tip this isn't a my opinion it is a must if you don't use black memento it will smear when you color okay so this is a must you can get it at any craft store pretty much any online store memento black ink joann's.com if you don't live near a store but this is what you have to use there's no ifs ands or buts about it okay so second of all i purchased this uh book at joann's.com it's annie's paper crafts Copic Coloring Guide. It's a wonderful book. Even if you don't read, you just look at the pictures. Okay, and it gives you so, so many ideas. Let me kind of zoom out. I'm going to shut this light off for the glare purpose of this video. Or for this part. But it shows you all the different shadings. If you're not good at lighting, you could just look at the pictures and, and know. It breaks down, um, it was like $15, I think. It came with a CD, which I put it away. I don't even think I ever watched it. It shows you how to do, um, I mean, 
Can you see the sheer? So it looks like she has sheer. Yeah. So all kinds of tips in here. It shows you different patterns for hair colors. Um, skin tone. Look at all these different combinations for doing skin tones. And then it shows you examples of it over here. So that is a cool book. They have these online. Google them. Uh, go to joannes.com. Search in Copic Colorings. I think anybody who sells Copics probably sells these books. It's a good investment if you're really getting into it. Another tip. Paper. Paper, I cannot stress, is the key to good coloring. Um, there's many different brands out there for Copic coloring. I've used a few different brands. I go back to this one. Um, happens, actually I just found it last year. It happens to be my favorite now. It's Spectrum Noir. I get this at my local craft store called Pack of Tans. Um, I think it's only based in Ohio though, so that store. I don't know if Michael sells it. I don't think they do because I don't even know if they sell Spectrum Noirs. But anywhere that sells Spectrum Noir paper or you can Google it and just type in Spectrum Noir paper and it will lead you to a place that sells it for you. Okay, it is a 100 pound cover weight. It's ultra smooth finish for professional results when used with alcohol based markers. That is important. Do not use your alcohol markers on ordinary cardstock, porous cardstock. It has to have a smooth finish. Not a glossy finish like this, like the acetate. That's not good. And there's glossy paper, like Tim Holtz makes a glossy that is for alcohol inks that's too shiny it just needs to be a nice smooth and this is this is a good one and it's fairly inexpensive you get 20 sheets i think oh my god i think it was five dollars around five for six dollars which isn't bad um i used to use this artistry paper pad where is it i actually did this video yesterday and it got ruined because i went to work and trusted trusted nobody to use my computer and they ruined my video but anyways it I don't know where it is now but it it's an in the fine artistry department at like Michaels or any craft store you can go to the fine artistry department and they have illust uh, pads manga m-a-n-g-a I think it is and it comes in a booklet and it's what the um, illustrators use to draw their cartoons and stuff and it'll say on there used for alcohol markers so look in your fine artistry departments too at your local craft stores and those are good too okay so what else did I have to say okay if you're having trouble like um, people say to do like your shading and everything and where to put the Sun a good tip to do is just if you can't get that concept which I'll explain it when I'm coloring in the next video you can just look at your images and see where they have darker shadings, you know, where it should be darker and lighter. And they, you know, the colorings are, they speak for themselves on there. You can see they did darker in here. But another cool thing that I keep by me or look at is if you have greeting cards. Oh, I just made a big mess. Look at other people's artwork. Look in the store when you find these watercolor like cards. You can see how they color and where the pleats should be and just look at those pictures and how the hair should be. This is just a, a, a greeting card that somebody gave um, somebody in the family. And I mean look at that. So yeah, this is the what you're going for. So just look at other images. If you can't get the concept of the sun let someone else do the work for you and just copy it. Okay, so enough on that. And um, so today I'm doing a greeting farm. The, for this first tutorial, I'm just going to stamp an image and show you just tips on it. I'm not going to like color it perfect. This one I just colored up and I used. Is that better lighting? And I used, um, she looks a little blotchy on camera, but she really, it really does look better. I used, I like her a little more pale with a, a shadow, not like a suntanny shadow, like I would, like see how she's different. I do more of a 
the browns and stuff because so, she looks real suntan. But she's a little more dark haired, black haired, pale skin. So for this combination I used my E50. I don't know why it won't focus. Alright, I'm not going to play around trying to do that. Okay, it's E50 called Eggshell. E51, Milky White. E02 is Fruit Pink, and that's just for the little blush on her cheeks. And E71, which is called Champagne, and it's like a taupe, and that's what I used for the shadowing. Alright, so let's get started. Um, I'm going to use this Gorgeous Girl stamp, and I'm going to stamp her out using my Memento because... Someone asked me what these blocks were for, and that they, they are acrylic blocks, and you put your stamps on them and use them for stamping. Okay, so I ink up my stamp. I'll try to do it on camera. I just ink up my stamp with my memento. And I cut my cardstock down. I cut it... Um, you can cut it any size you want, but I usually cut one eight and a half and eleven by five and a half, and then by four and a, I split them into four and a quarters, and then I can stamp. All right, so I'm going to show you how I did her skin, and we'll just work on this as a test dummy. I want to show you some tips. Um, a lot of people do their skin video are some people start with their dark color and work with their light color I don't like to do that and I'm going to show you why um, I like to lay down my light color first and work my way and use my darkest last and I'm going to tell you why and this is going to be a tip right here to show you here's my lightest and my second lightest and then my darkest so I'm going to apply I'm going to just use this scrap paper, for instance, to show you. Here's, I'm applying my, um, my lightest color. I should have did that backwards, but. I'm applying my lightest color. When you add darker color on top of lighter color, it deepens it and darkens it and changes it. Um, so it's better to add darker on top. When you... Let me give you a perfect example here. When you have a dark color down and you add light on top of it, it actually removes. And I don't like the lines that it gives. So that's why I choose to do do it like that. Now, you can go over it and blend it if you want to lighten it up. But look at that. It removed color. But if I go over darker with my light... It just gets darker and it adds more depth. Can you see the difference? That had no color under it, that had a lighter color under it, and it made it darker. When I colored with... So that is why I, I work from lightest to darkest and I add my darkest color at the very last around my edges. You can see that looks crappy. I, it took it off. Now, sometimes you want that technique, and that's perfectly fine, but when you're doing faces, it makes lines, and I don't like it. Where there, it doesn't. But then you can go back in. <clears throat> now, another thing, when I'm blending in with a lighter color, I always want to, because alcohol inks move around on your paper, and that's how you get your shading. You're moving that ink around. So when I'm laying this ink down and I have a lighter color and I want to go into a darker color like around my face, I want to push in to blend it into that color. Because it pushes that ink and it doesn't give you a blotty, more of a blotty line. Now if you really, you know, are you trying to soften your lines, then you can kind of circular motion and take some of that color off but when doing a small area like a face you just don't have time to keep layering and layering and layering so that's why I do it that way now you see I went over it with my light color and it faded it which sometimes that's good when you're doing like blue jeans and you want that faded look 
Now, also, let me show you a tip with the colorless blender. People think you blend with your colorless blender. No, you don't. I'm going to lay down this color right here. And when you're first coloring with, it looks, you can see all the lines. See how that ink is wet and it's moving around? Now that will dry and, and blend in. Those marks, will, well, it won't unless you go over the same. You have to get it even. Like if you're doing the same... All right, see how those ink, those, it's going to dry and form a very nice smooth finish. You just have to keep adding layers and layers, but that's why you need the smooth paper because look how your ink lays on top and just blends in and you can move it around. It stays wet. And then it does dry. See, it dries. But yeah, those are so, okay, so colorless blender tips on that. Colorless blender is not to do when you hear people say, okay, now blend it in. Do not use your colorless blender for that. Think of your colorless blender as an eraser. This takes ink off. If you get out of line on your images, like I'll show you right here on her. Um, you know, you go over the line a little bit see on her arm there you take your colorless blender and think of it it's an eraser and it doesn't just erase it you need to push the ink back into your image because it's wet now reds and blacks you're you know it's going to stain what do you that's just like on your car all right now that looks a little wet but it will dry and look i pushed that color right back into her arm and i got rid of it that's what a colorless blender's for Sometimes if I'm doing like a pair of pants or the front of a dress that I want to fade it a little bit, I will. Watch how this is going to take off the color. See how it removes color? So if you want that look, like on a pair, you know, if you're trying to do pants and blue jeans and you just want that little fade, that's how you do that. Let me show you something with a darker color. Because this is really cool what you can do too. Now, okay, your paper, you will have, you want that. Because that's how you know you've worked your colors and got them in and blended good. You, want, you don't want it to seep through so it gets on what you're writing on. But you do want to see it on the back of your paper. Alright, so I'm going to go on the back of this and I'm going to go in with a dark blue color. Because I want to show you something. with the colorless blender. <clears throat> you can do polka dots because you're removing. So say I wanted to do polka dots, I want to remove color or stripes or you know you just sit there and make a little circle and you keep putting it on there it's going to take off color. And you can keep going as much as you want. Look at that. See? So you can do patterns, like if you have a little... I need a new nib on here. My nib's getting wiggly. I did far too many polka dots. So yeah, that's what a colorless blender is. It is your eraser for markers. Now, you're not going to go out of the lines and make a huge... You know, it's just for fine tune-ups. Little boo-boos. Not, you know... You're not going to get... You're not going to erase this whole thing. Trust me. But yeah, look at the... You can make little polka dots and just keep going in a circle until it removes as much ink as you want. Cool, huh? Then you could take like a fine pen and circle around them. So that's how you can make different patterns. Okay, so pretend this is a pant leg. And I had fading, but I want to make, you know, I want to make her jeans look like they're faded in one spot. I'm just going to keep... See how it just removed some of the ink? And look. Nothing's on there. So yeah, this is just like 
alcohol, which I need to refill mine. If you only have Spectrum Nor blenders, you can mix your different blenders. They're all the same, guys. I actually have these because I like the tips. Where there, I like the tips on these. You got a bigger broad tip and a hard chisel tip for doing these more polka dots. Look, whoops, I'm not on camera. This is more of a hard marker chisel. See? So yeah, all the colorless blenders of any kind of alcohol-based bar. Okay, so enough of that. Those are my little tips and tricks for um, for that. I hope that helps. Now let's get on to, and I always keep a piece of the paper that I'm, the. it has to be the marker paper because you want it to look, it will look different. Um, you will absorb the heck out of your inks if you use a porous paper, I'm telling you. And never put your Copics on watercolor paper. I mean, the ink will just pour out. So anyways, um, I always keep a little spare so I can test my colors as I go and see which ones I'm going to like. But anyways, I'm going to... I colored her skin so you can kind of see. And now I'll, I'll go over coloring it with you. So I first, I have, like I said, I have E50, 51, 02, and 71. There you go. The E2 is going to be for blush. And it says fruit pink, so that's obvious. You know this is your darkest. It's going to be for shadowing. Out of these two, I'm going to use my lightest one first and then add, you know, the pink around her. So... I'm starting with E50 and then E51. I take my lightest color and I just cover her whole face. Everything. Right over the eyes and everything. Because she just has black dots. I'm not... And I just get her little, little neckline. I don't go to the arms. I work one section at a time. So I put that down. It's nice and wet. Now, if you really want her pale, go ahead and just uh, leave her like that and just put a little shadow on her. Because sometimes, you know, you really want her gothic -y looking. Um, now I'm going to go in with my E51, which is milky white. And I'm just, I'm going to hit her neck. I'm just going around her face. I want the center to kind of be... Be left white now when you say blending your colors this is when I would go back in with my lightest to soften up those lines and like I said I am push going from the center and pushing in because I'm pushing that dark color back into her all right now she's a small she's kind of the way I like her maybe I want a little more um a little more right there that's good now I'll go back in with my lighter one again to soften that, push that back up. But I want it to look like she has the sun hitting her face. That's just how I want this image to look. Alright, now I'm going in with my E71, which is champagne. And I'm just, now if you don't have this exact color, you can use, you know, like your lighter grays, these uh, W5s, sometimes, you know, a darker brown. You can play around. So now I'm just going to trace the outline ever so slightly with the very tip of my marker to make that shadow around her face. I'm going to go in, and I know around her hair she's going to have shadows. Under her chin she's going to have a little more, and on this side of her face I'll do a little more because there. Now it looks really strong and dark and crazy now, but I will soften it. Now I'll go on her neck because you know her neck's going to have a shadow. Alright, so now I'm going to go back in with my um, eggshell. Not my eggshell, my raw silk E53, which was my second darkest. And I'm going to go soften the lines that I had with that one and then I'm gonna go back in with my lighter one again and do the same thing in the middle and push all that color back up 
and then I kind of give it a once over. Now look how that, can you see how that's just blending? And it's really looking like a shadow. Awesome. It doesn't look as good because she's not colored. And you can see this one, I did a little more darker than I did over here. Now for the blush. You don't have to use a blush. I like to. I'm using this E02, which is um, pale fruit pink. And I'm. it's only for this color combination. I don't always use this. I'm just hitting where I think her blush would be, going right over ever so slightly. Just a little color there. Now you can go back over it with your lightest color to blend that in. I actually think it looks good. So there, well, I did it anyways. All right, so there's her face. Now I move down to her arms. I'm not going to waste time on her arms doing the lightest color because they are such a small area. So I'm just going to hit it with my second lightest color, which is the E53. Or you can just do that lightest color, but we're going to do... I didn't stamp this image good. I moved it, but that's okay. This is just for... All right. And then I'm going to go in with my um, shadow. Now I know she's going to have a shadow under her armpit, right here where her hairline goes, just ever so slightly. She's going to have a shadow going down her arm because she's against her body and her knee's going to make a shadow and then she's going to have a shadow along the bottom of her hand because it's on the floor. Okay? And I'll do the same to this side. And then I'll go back with my E51 and that's how I'm going to blend her out. Get rid of the harsh line, blend it in there, make it look like a shadow. See? Now maybe I should have used my lighter for her arms, so maybe I'll just... <clears throat> but that looks good. She's got a little suntan going. All right. I'm going to shut this off and we're going to do the hair now next. So, okay. I'm back with the hair. Um, I don't know if this video is going to be in one and two parts or if I'm going to be able to upload it all in one, but it's different segments so you can click off when you don't want to see. But anyways, all right. So for my hair, I'm going to use, I always use my C's. If you don't know what that means. <clears throat> Um, I basically use, these are the cool grays. I use, I start with my lightest, which is a C1. And then I do, it depends on how big her area of her hair is, if I'll go even lighter. But I usually do, um, for an area like this, I usually stick with my C1, C5, I don't know if I'm going to, maybe I'm just going to go C7 and C9. What did I do with my C9? I just put it away yesterday. Why is my C9 missing? It's got to be buried in my desk. Like I said, I did this video yesterday and I had to get rid of it. And I'm redoing it. All right, so... I really don't use my black, um, but I might have to now because my C9 is missing. C9 is almost black. All right, let me zoom in. I don't want to waste precious time on this. Get as close as I can for you. Is that focusing? There, that looks good. All right, let me just start out. I'm going to use my lightest color. The Gorgeous Girls are really good. This was the one I colored yesterday. You can see her hair. I did add a little bit of black because my C9 was running out. I think I put it away so I could fill it, and I don't know where I put it. Oh, well, that's what happens when you do videos, live videos. 
Gorgeous girls, these kind of stamps when you're doing hair, it's very hard to do hair if you don't have any lines, if you just have the outline of the hair. Um, you can do So it's great if you're beginning. Get the, get the stamps that already have the work done for you. And you can see, you know, kind of where it should be highlighted. And you can see she's got a lighter color. And, you know, you always know that in the part it's darkest. Along the back of the hairline it's darkest because the sun's not hitting there. The back of the head and behind the shoulders is always going to be darkest. Where the light is going to hit it on these arches and along her tips and stuff, that's where you know it's going to be the lightest. And the same with this one. The sun is beaming on her, so it's going to make a shine across her bangs. Her part and her long hair is going to be darker because the sun's on top of her head. By her temples, it's going to be darker because it goes in. That's going to be darker, and the sun's going to hit her a little bit there. Um, I didn't go over light source. Let me go over light source with you. You kind of want to know, if you have a problem with it, know that wherever your light source is coming from, let's say the sun. Let's say the sun's shining this way, and it's going to hit her this way. Everything on this side is going to be lighter, because think of it as the sun or the light pushing the color in. It takes the color and pushes it in, so you're going to have your shadows. If you make your sun going this way, or your light source, then the top of her head's going to be lighter. Not to say you're going to make her a big white bald spot there, because no, people's hair, your hair is shadowing, you have a part, but your little light spots are going to be hitting there. If you have it directly beamed straight to her, you know, in the front, her face is going to be lighter. Um, and if you don't know and it confuses you, just look at pictures. Think of it as the light hitting her this way. So her the light's shining on her face and pushing the shadows in here. It's missing over here because it's shadowed and the center of her dress is getting it, you see? Okay. So, I'm going to start by laying down my lightest C1. Some people just do it and leave white. I don't. I color the whole whole head in with my C1. Just because I think it wets it down. I don't want it. You can do it. Leave your stark white if you want. It's your preference. Like I said, you need to play and uh, come up with what you like. But this is how I do it. And sometimes I do it different. I don't. This is basically how I do it. It depends on your stamp. It depends on the look you're going for. Alright, so I laid down my first color. It's very light, very subtle. Now I want to go in, I'm going to go in with my C5 and I'm going to start, I always, I always just start at the top and I'm turning this every which way. I'm going in her part. I'm putting my tip right in her part and I'm streaking it down. Light flicks. So you're dabbing it so the ink gets darker and you're coming up like a feather. How do you like that? And you want the lines. We're not coloring in. Now I'm going to turn it and I'm going to do this side. Just a light flick going down with her shape of her head. And you want to make these flicks longer because this is how you're going to be blending in. And if you didn't make them long enough, come come back over it. Okay, I'll do a little bit right there because I know the light's gonna go. Whoops, light's gonna go across here. Now I'm gonna come up on her bangs, and I'm gonna go up because I want the darkest point to be around her face, and I'm flicking up, not going over the. I'm not going over. You know, I am leaving a spot where that C9 is laid down. Don't go all the way up and cover it all up. And just some flicks. Now in here by her temples, we want it to be darker. So I'm just flicking right in that area. And on this side, around her barrette, we know the barrette's going to cause a shadow, so I go around that and I'm going down. Light flicks, her temple's going to be darker and right there by her face. Make some of them a little longer because, you know, hair's highlighted. Right here, the lines are already there for you, so I'm going to make a couple flicks. Right here, I'm going to make a couple flicks just on those dark lines. 
right here it kind of indents from the back and along her arm I'm going up I'm following the lines guys underneath her neck I always just color that in with all my colors because that's going to be pretty much the darkest so here I'm going to flick can you see where I'm flicking I'm not doing this really good because it's hard to do it on camera. Alright, so you see I basically have my flicks in there. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and, well, I will do my C7. And this is even going to be darker. And I go right, same thing, right from the part and I flick out. But I don't go down as long. You know, I want to leave some of that showing, the, the lighter color. Around her hairline, I fill it in on the back of her head and flick and flick see how it's changing get those couple pieces there I turn it this way and and I'm following the lines it's it's right there for you when you don't have any lines and it's just a drawing of the hair you gotta create them yourself but these flicks will create hair strands See how nice that's looking? Now I'll come up on her bangs, focusing, and can't press hard because it'll bleed into your skin. I always do the hair last because the skin will bleed when you're trying to color. I always do my skin first. That way I don't have any bleeding. Getting those temples really good, temple area where it's indented, going back over that. Just light flicks. See how it's shading it in darker and darker? Focusing on her barrette. Oops, we forgot this little piece here. There. Alright, so you can kind of see that. Now, this is when I would use my C9, but uh, I don't have it with me, so I'm going to have to use my black just for this, but sometimes I just hit the black. This will give it good shine. Now I'm going to flick ever so lightly. I don't want to go... I want to leave those gradiating. Wow, why does that look like that? Because the ink is wet and shiny. There. My light. There. Is that better? I'm getting a glare, that's why. Alright, so then. Flick, flick, flick. Deeper in that part line. You got to be really careful when you're using the black because it's just way overpowering. And I'll blend this back out with my lighter colors, or my, whoopsie, I went over the line, but I'm going to fussy cut, so that's okay. It's really hard to do this when you're on camera. I'm quiet when I color, too. See, this black is just really wet. You're better off using the C9 at the end. And you could shoot some over a little bit. That's fine. Giving her bangs a real wispy. I don't know what my favorite color scheme is to do for hair. I like playing with it. It's fun. I like to create the highlights and um. All right, so you can kind of see that. So this is a little too stark. So I'm gonna start by 
going up and down so I can blend my oh man I grabbed the no I didn't yes I did I put the wrong cap on I dug on it did I no I didn't it just looks really dark on the black you gotta be careful you don't put your lids on wrong I've done that This is my C1. Okay. Scared me. <sighs> that glare is terrible. You can see better now. So now I'm going to just flick and go back and forth. Oh, I, I know why it's get darker because I'm grabbing that black. See why you don't use the black? Now I'm going to do my... I'm going back with my C6. And I'm going to blend that because I just... And you can get this the white as stark as you want. I don't... Because I used that black and that... I'm not going to make it as stark. But once you're... It's funny because once you're... Um, once you start coloring hair, you're going to start... When you're in public and stuff... You're going to start uh, looking at people with like black hair and look at the shine in their hair and where the light hits it. I do that all the time now. Alright, that looks better. But I'm still not happy with it. So I'm going to come in with my C5 and come down a little more. <clears throat> Flicking. Especially in here, because I don't want it. I don't want it to look as. I don't know. I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. So she has a sheen, and I toned it down a bit. Now you can make this as black as you want down here, but I kind of like, I think it just gives her a little bit of a look like she has some highlights. So there's the hair. Okay, and now I will do her tights. So I'm going to stop this and just turn it back on. That's a glare. Maybe I shouldn't use that. Look how different that looks. This is an odd light that I have because the first video I did it was really yellowed. So my colors weren't coming out. But there. Can you? It just looks good. Alright. So I'll put that light back on. And for her tights, I'm going to use some blues. I'm going to shut this off and pick my colors. I'll be right back. Oh my gosh, I'll have to pause that. So, well, anyways, I sat there and picked my colors. I chose darker colors because I want to really show it on video. Um, so, I'm going to do her stripes first. And what I want to do is I want to create a line in the center. If you can see on this one, where's my camera? 
so it looks like the light is shining because we know the color is going to be darker around her shadow so I'm going to start with my lightest color which is BG90 these are the three I'm using which I might only use two but no I will use three BG93, BG96 and BG90 alright I'm going to start with my lightest which is BG90 I'm going to color I'm just going to color the stripes and I'm only starting in the corners and I'm leaving the center uncolored. Uh, for this, this is so light that I'm going to color the whole stripe in with this. With this color. If I was just using two colors, I'd leave the center without any color. But her stripes are a little bigger so I can get away with it. All right, so you can see, you can barely see it. It's very light. Now I'm going to go in with this BG93, and I'm going to just start from the end, move up, doing flicks, and leave the center open. Do you see that? I didn't go all the way to the center, so you do that with all of them. That one's not going to have it because she's covered with her leg. I just colored the whole thing. So yeah, just do the and kind of keep your white line even you know you don't want one over here it goes up her leg just a few little flicks leaving that center open can you see that alright now I'm going to come in with my BG 96 which is a really dark it's called bush and I'm not gonna go all the way to where I went with the other one but I'm just I'm gonna do even less just the ends leaving a little bit of that light green and sometimes you're just dotting it so just the edges Now it's even more prominent. Now I'm going to go back in with this BG93, which was the second lightest, and I'll push that back, going the opposite way to blend that, still leaving my center open. So it just softens the two colors together and gradiates them. There. Okay, so now I'm going to fill in... Um, just her tights with this light one but I actually think it might be too light and again I want to leave the well I'm not even gonna I'm gonna leave the center yep I am leaving that center kinda open I mean you know without color That one can get it because it's underneath her leg. I should go darker because that's just not good on camera, but you can kind of get the gist. All right, so now I'm going to do her dress, and I'm just going to keep it in the same colors. Um, I'm going to do this BG90, and I'm going to color her whole dress with it. Be careful around her hair because it was black ink, so see it's smearing stay away from because this is such a light color when we get into the darker color it'll be okay I just want to lay down this very light color to get her dress wet and that's going to be the base tone I'm just going to really do shadowing with her dress she's already got the pleats going on in her dress so then I'm going to come in with um, the BG 93 which is the second lightest and I'm going to go along her armpits around her legs here up here is going to be darker because her hair is shadowing it so I can color that and I'm going to go around by her legs now I'm going to go with these pleats down her dress I'm just drawing a line here going up there there and there 
Now I'm going to come in with my darker one and I'm going to go over that pleat, just the pleats. I'm not going to work on the edging, just that pleat, just that pleat. Come over here to this one. And I'm going to hit it a few times, see how it's dark. <clears throat> now this is where I want to come in. And I'm going to, um, in between, I'm going to hit that with my lightest, in between those pleats. Why? Because it's going to take some color off, but still define my pleat. See how I did that? And it took... Uh-oh, my battery's dying. I'll have to come back.